All right, welcome to Fire Dojo. I've got quite a bit of things to go over this week. So um, I'm helping out a friend, uh, Marcel, from Les Primitives. He's having a fire workshop and uh, I'm sending him a couple gifts. And uh, so going this way, we have a pump drill. We have a mouth drill set with a pressure mouth brace. We have an Egyptian drill. We have a fire thong. And over here, we have a gauchos drill. All right, so that's one, two, three, four, we got five. And uh, I have to test all of these, as I always do, before they get shipped out to make sure that they work. And you're about to see those tests. All right, so whenever you're doing, here's some advice. If ever you're gonna demo friction fire methods, always start with the uh, energy intensive method first. And the energy intensive methods are always the ones that always have two parts. So, for example, it would be hand drill, if it was the drills, because there's only two parts. Uh, the other energy intensive ones are the three linears. So there's fire plow, fire saw, and fire thong. And the only linear we have here is the fire thong. So we're going to do that one first. Now let me get the energy intensive one out of the way first. So, uh, there's only two materials that really, really work for fire thong, and that is, uh, number one, uh, rattan, okay, and you would take rattan and you would s split it down, okay, this one is uh, in eighths, like a pizza pie, okay. You would take those sections and you would make blades like this. Now, um, in order to save on material, instead of making blades this long, right, I make these 18 inches and then what you do is you add uh, handles. So what I do, um, which is something I learned from, was it Maine Primitive School? And also from Barry Keegan, who, uh, an old friend of mine, showed us this method. Not only does it save on material, right? Not only does it save you on this material that's taken up by the cord, it's nice to have the toggles where you're not just holding on to the blade, but you have the full grip of your hands in order to hold on to the blade. The base, so there's two parts to a fire thong, really. a blade and a base. This base is made of white fur. Albie's Concaller is the scientific name. Uh, these are really just stands. They're also made of white fur. And as you can see, I put uh, lap joints in here. And that way this stands up while I step on it. It also has a clearance for the blade to go. All right, I'm gonna do this first one here. Now you notice, uh, these are grooved to help the blade stay in place, okay? The holes are 5 sixteenths, but at the top, you'll see that they've been um, step drilled. They're much larger holes in order to get the coal out quickly. And oh, by the way, I should probably have something to 
top that I call out, which I now do, and to put it on something, don't tell anybody, it's a plate. All right, so, uh, oh, and the second material that is best is bamboo. There's really only rattan and bamboo for fire thong that are the best materials that won't break. They're the most flexible, have the most tensile strength. Everything else just breaks. So if there's a material that works for fire thong other than rattan and bamboo, I, I have no knowledge of it, honestly. So what we want to do is, first of all, warm up the blade so it doesn't just crack and break on us, right? So what we're gonna do is how you warm it up so that it gets more flexible is use your hands. Getting used to this setup. This is a new setup for me. Because we want it to be able to bend around and warm up. I'm going to put the weight on the base. Let's check that again. Okay. It's a new design I'm trying. So uh, I needed to take a quick break. So as you can see here, uh, cutting the groove early helps make sure that the blade stays uh, under the hole and helps keep contact here. You can see it's, it did its job. Now, if this isn't usually always in contact, all of the dust will just fall out the side. It won't just be... See, it has to fight gravity, the coal, and it has to go up into the hole when it works. So, um, if the blade is not always under the hole, coal dust will just fall out of the hole, which you don't want. So we're gonna give that another shot. We're going to use the same hole, same blade. I have to warm it up again because it gets cold. If you don't warm it, and you do this cold, you could end up just cracking. would be better suited outside, but the reason we're doing this in my kitchen again is because it's dark outside. I think I understand why I'm having a little trouble with this. Um, I think this blade is thicker than it's supposed to be. Because the other blades I made, uh, especially this one, this one's a little thinner and it's more flexible. This one, if, if you noticed before, wasn't as flexible. I think it's too thick. So if we look at this, you can see that it burns here. 
up to here. Like this is the real burn. If you can see that. Okay. Now the thing is, is that the burn is supposed to be at least a third. of the blade. So it's supposed to be from here to this end. You can see that. Excuse me. Alright, so I'm definitely not getting enough surface area. This here, where you can see that it is burned, that's definitely not enough surface area to get the proper friction that we want. What you want is uh, in the middle, a little over a third. So if this is a third, and this is a third, we want over a third of burn. So what I'm going to do is, uh, so it's not to use up another blade, I'm going to shave this blade down, which should make it more flexible, and again the proper size, and we'll try it again later. And I'm glad we did, as my son mentioned, who was holding the camera, Jake. Uh, glad we did the labor intensive one first. Anyway, uh, so going up in order of labor intensity, now there's only drills. So we have a pump drill, mouth drill, an Egyptian drill, and a gaucho's drill. So the next labor intensive one would be the gaucho's drill. But I'm going to do that later. I am going to do uh, this one, which is the mouth drill. Now, uh, here we have a uh, hearthboard of Western Red Cedar, okay, which as you know is pretty soft. So to start off, we're going to be doing um, whole spindles of evening primrose. Uh, Oenothera biennis, which is a scientific name, and a giant ragweed, which is uh, Ambrosia trifida. Okay, now the ends of these, now these uh, mouth drills should be thicker than a hand drill. So hand drills are like up to like half an inch. Mouth drills should be about five eighths of an inch in diameter at the base, which is what these are. Um, these are bamboo. And the reason the bamboo is here is because uh, these uh, plant stalks, the evening primrose and the giant ragweed, are not as hard and they're going to be easier to light than bamboo. The bamboo is here to prove that you can light bamboo something as hard as bamboo. Um, I recommend only the woods that you would use for bow drills be used for mouth drills. Now, a bow drill spindle should be about three quarters of an inch. So again, I've said this in past videos, but uh, you have to think of a mouth drill as between a hand drill and a bow drill, what's in between. So if you find something that's in between that, it's not quite a hand drill, it's not quite a bow drill, it's probably a mouth drill. All right, so here's the pressure mouth brace. This is made out of birch. Okay, the hole here is 3 eighths of an inch in diameter. So that's going to fit our 5 eighths inch spindle well, right? And we're going to put a drop of any good oil, like a vegetable oil, in there. Which one? We're going to start with the evening primrose. See how that goes, right? Make sure you stick the right end in. Don't stick the wrong end in the mouth drill. Okay. So as you can see, this board has never been used. Okay. Make a little room there. We'll pick one on the end here. Now, don't put your teeth directly on the pressure mouth brace. 
fold up a paper towel, put that over. So this does two things. It softens the bite and it catches your saliva because basically your mouth is open downward and gravity just takes over and you just drip saliva everywhere and you don't want that. Right. Now I cannot speak while this is happening. So I'm not really going to explain anything, but um, rotations and speed are what matter. So you go from palm to fingertip and uh, just try to go as fast as you can. You can hear the sound change as you usually do with a hand drill. That's when you know you have friction and the notch will start filling with dust and we're just going to keep going. There's your proof that a mouth drill is very effective and we respectfully put the call in the sink. Okay, so that was evening primrose. This giant ragweed has a slight bend in it, which if you don't know, one of the reasons why people don't like Maltro is if your spindle is not perfectly straight. It's like kissing a jackhammer. It just reverberates in your skull. And it's not, doesn't feel very good. This one I think is a little taller too. Yep, it's an inch, inch and a half taller. I'm just gonna use the same hole. So giant ragweed on cedar. Call that a success. All right. And we respectfully put the coal in the sink. All right. So I'm going to take a second and we're going to do one of these. One of the bamboo. We're not going to do all of them, just one more. All right. All right. So I'm going to try this bamboo. Next, and uh, if we look real close here, uh, this is the evening primrose, and the second one here is the giant ragweed. Now, if we look at the lumens, meaning the the inner the space 
in the middle, okay, you'll see that uh, the plant stalks have large lumens, large hole spaces in the center, or large pits. This is one of the reasons why hand drills work so well, because if they were solid, they would not work as well. Now, if we look at this bamboo, at least this particular section of bamboo, because there's hundreds of species of bamboo, the wall here is much thicker. Not only is it thicker, it's harder. Um, so there's more surface area here, harder surface area, more dense surface area, which is going to make uh, it harder to get friction with because I'm going to need to require more pressure. The more dense and harder the material, the more pressure you're going to need. Okay, so uh, technically, this would be bow drill material because I would need to put more body weight on it. But can we get away with doing it with a mouth drill? Well, we're about to find out because I've I've done bamboo before, but this is a particular thick wall with less of a lumen. So we're going to see how this goes. Also, this has a bit of a bend in it, which does not make for a very comfortable experience. But we're going to see how that goes. So I'm going to put just a tiny, the tiniest drop in there. Make sure you have the right end. Excess. Again, the pressure mouth brace is birch. We're going to do a new socket. We're going to do the one right next to it, which means this has to go through the process of mating, warming up, and filling the notch, and then igniting. Since we did two with this first one here, okay. So right off, that's a very uncomfortable experience. I don't know if you can see my head moving back and forth. And I'm not going to give my friend that one. So we're going to try this other one. So comparatively, the wall is a little thinner, which is good. The lumen is a little larger. This one is probably more balanced. It is shorter. It does have a slight bend in it, but we'll see if that's bad or anything. It's going to make my posture a little off. We'll see how it goes. So this bamboo one works with the cedar. I'm not going to give them this long one. If I want us to remain friends, that is, I'm not going to give it to them. So I'm going to give them these three. You know what? I'm looking at these other two and they look rather oval and not really round. I'm going to leave that one, those ones out too. And respectfully, put the coal in the sink. Okay, so these are done. And I think I'm going to do this Egyptian drill next. Alright, so the Egyptian drill. The bow is a, notice the cord is a little longer than a regular bow drill. 
This is an entirely birch set, by the way. Entirely. The, the hearth board is birch. The reload on the Egyptian drill is birch. The Egyptian drill itself is made of birch. Betula species. I don't know what kind of birch it is, but it's birch. All right. This comes with extra reloads here for the drill. Pressure hand brace is also birch, solid birch. Now how an Egyptian drill works is woods that are too hard for a bow drill should work for an Egyptian drill. Not the hardest of woods. The hardest of woods you need a either a pump drill, a crutch drill, or a toggle drill when you get into the extremely hard woods. But woods that are harder, too hard for bow drill, you can do with an Egyptian drill, in theory. Okay. So multiple wraps around what is called a torque spindle, because the spindle is a larger diameter than the reload, that makes it a torque spindle the multiple wraps around the spindle ensure that it's grabbing and won't go anywhere and is forced to, to turn. So we're going to pick this socket here. None of It's been used down here as a test, but um, uh, we're going to try this one here just because it's an open space. Tiniest drop in there. Okay. And you're going to put as much body weight as you can on this. The reloads are three quarters of an inch in diameter. I'm going to try and keep my arm as straight as I can. A little tall. Or I'm too short. I don't want to. How do I know <coughs> that this is a wood that requires an Egyptian drill and is not suitable for a bow drill? If you get a close-up of the dust, it's not really dust. It's a bunch of big flakes. Can you see? See, they're flakes. How do you know it's a wood suitable for a bojo? This would be dust. Okay. So there's no coal there yet. We're going to put all this back. 
I'm going to take a second to get my energy back. And we're going to come back to that. All right, so I'm going to try the fire thong again. Now, this was the blade uh, that I attempted twice before. So uh, it's been a while since I did this, but I think I know what the issue is. Now, one is uh, you might be able to see here that I uh, took out much of the width from before. It was too thick, definitely. And um, here, I'm going to mark. Might be a little hard to see. You can see it's thick here and thin here. At least up to this point here. And this point here. The stroke should be at least this long. So before the stroke only went from here to here. But it should actually be a longer stroke when I do it. The other thing too is, is that um, one of the things that I forget and I forget this often, is that, I have to stand up for this. Okay, if this is too long, you can see this is down by my ankles. If this is too long, then it's a short stroke, because I can't, if you look up here, I can't turn my spine. To get a long stroke, I have to really turn my spine like this. But if this is too long, I can only turn it like this, if you look at my shoulders. If it's too long. So this has to be the right length. So I'm going to shorten these. I'm going to shorten the length a little bit. By the way, these toggles are white ash. Not that that matters. But. <laughs> so I'm going to shorten the length of the cord. And we're going to try this same uh, hole here on the white fur. Getting used to this setup here. I'm not used to this one. This is um, this is definitely a test. I've made other variations of fire thong in the past, and I'm getting to do no, learn this one. So oh, again, I'm going to warm this up, and I'm going to get as much of the length as I can this time. Flexible. That looks flexible. It's cooling down, which we don't want. Hopefully this won't break. Now you see why 
You do the labor intensive ones first. So, again, to balance the variables, uh, the blade was too thick, so we thinned it out. I made sure the stroke was longer, and I adjusted my length of stroke. My sh stroke length was too short. So it was a longer stroke. If you um, look on the video, you can see it was a much shorter stroke. So we know that this set works. Right? Okay. And respectfully, the coal goes in the sink. That's why you don't do this on the floor. So that works. I'm going to put that aside. And I'm going to take a second and we're going to go back to the Egyptian drill. Okay. Alright, so we're going to uh, try to finish this Egyptian drill. Okay. Now, when I first was shown Egyptian drill um, in the mid 90s, which as in 1990s, that was a long time ago, and it was uh, shown to me and, and some other people by um, Barry Keegan, who uh, I credit with uh, showing me a lot of what I know today. And um, when he demoed Egyptian drill, uh, it was made entirely of hickory and how he showed us was uh, you can't do it in a sometimes you just can't do it in a traditional sense of a bow drill so how I'm doing it here right see how tall this spindle is I can't get my arm really straight so a regular bow drill spindle would be down here with the pressure hand brace and I can keep my arm straight and I can get my body on top of it. Because it's up here, I can't get my body weight down on top of this thing to apply enough pressure. So how he demonstrated it was he had his whole body weight on it like this, on his, in his neck and his chest, like this. And, and Barry Keegan, by the way, is like over six feet tall, and I'm really short. I'm like five foot six. So he also had more mass on him than, than I do or did. So I'm going to do the sternal method along with my chin, just like he did. Okay. I'm hoping this is not going to move. So now I can get my body weight on it because this needs much more pressure than a standard bow drill. So a lot of rotations, use the whole bow. might have stopped early. But I thought I had the makings of something there. Alright, so now we're going to start on the, the Gaucho's drill. The Gaucho's drill isn't very well known. It was only a very small region of South America. And uh, it's been written about by Charles Darwin 
in one of his books. I think it was Voyage of the Beagle. And he wrote about how the people of uh, South America called the Gauchos, I think it's in the Argentina area, how they would use a bent stick to make fire and uh, it was like a carpenter's brace and bit. So a carpenter's brace and bit, this would be considered the brace and this would be the bit, I believe, if I'm not incorrect. So how this works is you get a, uh, the person would find a stick shaped in a curve that was the appropriate material. Okay, so here, this is made out of uh, plywood. And the reason for that is because uh, the layers of plywood, the grain goes one way, and then it goes another way, and then it goes another way, and then it goes another way. So uh, if I were to just find a stick where the grain ran out, because of the downward pressure, that the pressure would might crack it along the grain on the angle. And uh, so we're trying, and I'm trying this one out for the first time because I never made one out of plywood before. So the reload is white fur, white fur, which is uh, AB's con collar. Okay, and the hearthboard is also white fur, so it's white fur on white fur. Okay, now this is called a pressure sternal brace and uh, how it works is this is a giant handhold it's made of Douglas fur not that that matters because it's greased in the in the hole pseudo tsuga uh, menz, menzizi and how this is done is the pressure sternal brace goes on your sternum like this and you put your body weight on it and you just turn it in. This is where this drill breaks all the rules. It goes in one direction. It doesn't have to go in one direction. Uh, you can go in the other direction, but you can do uh, get a call entirely in one direction. So I actually have two uh, pressure braces. There's the sternal one. And then I made one here out of white ash for the gauchos drill. This is a uh, crutch. And that one's gonna go this way to get my body weight on it. So I'm gonna just do both right now at the same time. So I think I'm gonna start with the sternal brace. And again, you're just seeing me test these out, right? So Got to get enough pressure to break through. As you can see, this has never been used. Down here, it's a fresh socket. That's sawdust in there. Because I like to raise the floor, as you know. Now this requires a lot of patience, actually, to get comfortable. goes on that long means the fibers are too compressed so let's see what happens because we got to break through because we got to get us some friction before we run out of energy Energy is an important variable. As you've seen.
so sometimes I forget that I need to the friction the friction of your hand turning the handle around your, your hand gets really hot so you got it other bit I didn't get to really show you, but this is the crutch version. So there's two versions to, to choose from. And that looks like a success, right? White fur on white fur. And we respectfully in the sink along with the sawdust all right so I'm gonna give my son the honor of showing you the pump drill So, this is a funny set. Uh, the pressure bar brace is made out of birch, some kind of Betula species. The spindle is made of white ash, Fraxinus americana. The reload is made of poplar. Okay. And uh, I have a few words written here on the flywheel. So, uh, what does it say? It says, it's in Japanese, Kore wa pump drill des yo. So if you know Japanese, you'll probably get the joke. So, am I gonna tell you what it means? No. So, my son is going to demonstrate the pump drill. Okay. Your hands are on the outside. Should I kneel or sit down? It's up to you, whatever's comfortable. Now, notice there's, there's nothing in the notch. This notch has been used. This was used by the mouth drill. This is uh, the cedar board. Okay, and here we go. Now, until it's fully mated, it's going to stick. It's going to stick until it's fully mated. So he has to mate it together. And once it's mated, you can 
just have to keep going. Keep going, keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going, keep going. Keep going, keep going. Keep going. Keep going, Jake, keep going. Almost there, keep going. Faster. Faster. Alright, you can stop. Careful. Okay, then. Yeah, I know. Pick it up. Yeah. <laughs> Gently blow on it. Now the pump drill is always my first recommended gateway drug to friction fire for children and young people and the newly initiated. We want it hard. Low. Blow through it. Blow, blow like you're blowing <laughs> through it. There, make it glow. So that's poplar. Poplar. On cedar. And then Jake, respectfully. <laughs> Respectfully puts it in the sink. Okay. Good job, Jake. Well done. All right. All right. So the total length of the spindle, including the reload, was 13 inches. And uh, because I'm shorter, smaller, uh, I cut three inches off. All right, so now this, the total length of this is 10 inches. And the reason for that is so that I can get my body weight on top of this thing and do it in the uh, regular manner. So the reason why it's usually taller than a regular bow drill is because when you do the Egyptian method, you have all these, uh, the string wraps around multiple times and it needs to ride up and down. And on a regular Bojel spindle, which is shorter, it doesn't have much room to ride up and down. So, so we're going to See about getting this to work. One of the tricks is, is to make sure that the cord So the top part leaves here, the bottom part leaves here, and you have to have enough length for all this cord wrapping. And also because the bow is held at an angle, you have to be careful about hitting the floor. So, so I'm probably going to be able to get my body weight more on top of this now, which is what we need to balance. Since I cut the top, I didn't oil the top. Oiling it now. Okay. Let's see if I can get. See, now I can straighten out my arm and keep it wrapped around my leg. So this should work a little better. 
Now remember, I was all the way up here, three inches taller, and I can't get my body weight on it. And when I press down, my arm bends. I need to keep my arm straight. So I'm just going to relax for a second. Just get this warmed up. I'm not even pressing down, I'm just holding it in place. Now I'm adding more pressure just by leaning on it. And now I actually can lean on it. Long strokes. Just relax. Just keep going. See how chunky it is? That's the problem with these hardwoods. They're not dust. Because it's chunky, it's like big chunks of firewood in a fire. It won't just catch. A coal is much harder to form with these big chunky pieces that come off in a hardwood. I know my son is relieved that he doesn't have to video anymore. <laughs> and there's our call. All right, so that about sums everything up now package everything up to ship because nothing goes out unless I've proven <clears throat> that everything works and uh, as you could see from all the uh, things that didn't work it's very important that you see when it doesn't work first of all it's just transparent that everything doesn't just magically work right that you make um, when something doesn't work, you have to really figure out what the variable is that you need to fix. So what variable did I fi fix? By cutting off the spindle. Which variable is that? Well, it may not be one that you may have thought of, but actually it has to do with space. And that space was the height of the spindle. So if I'm up here, that's incorrect space. It's incorrect distance. So by cutting the spindle, I can get down here, get my body weight on it, keep my arm straight, and that would be the proper spacing. So by adjusting the spindle height, I adjusted my space variable. Right. So that's it for this week. And 
Inspire Dojo is here to support all you global tribe of fire keepers out there. Anybody who wants to learn friction fire. And uh, let's keep going. <laughs> 